Okay, Scott has sent me a top loader that he tried to mod and somehow it failed. This is one of my amps and it looks like pin 21 broke off the PPU but it does look to be um, well soldered and as far as I can tell everything is starting to check out. They have a very unique multi-out connector placement. I really like it but it looks like it, they put a lot of work into it. It needs to be painted. It's kind of a bluish color somehow. I'm not sure how that happened. But it's definitely rock solid in there. And when we turn on the system all we get is a black screen with kind of like an audio buzz. And I have done nothing more than I pulled out my LCR meter and I checked all the caps um, these four were fine but the reset cap was showing a crazy number seventeen hundred nanofarad and like seven point oh five resistance that is off the charge. It's supposed to say right, right around 500 nanofarad. It's supposed to say 470, but they usually say around 500. And of course, I usually get about maybe 0.1. So I took that cap out, and it and it uh, measured fine. So that got me thinking. And the only as you can follow the trace back, the, tr the only thing this is connected to is pin 3 of the CPU. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the CPU and put it in my test board and see if it's bad. As usual, the 808 makes quick work. I always try to move the pins a little bit back and forth. This is not a sharp knife, so it's not going to harm anything. <laughs> Flawless just popped right out. Okay, so now that cap should only be connected to the switch. Which I guess I misspoke earlier. It's it's not only traced up to pin 3 of the CPU, but it's also connected to the switch, which I would highly doubt would be causing that kind of crap. Yeah. 493.6 and 0.02. That's a very perfect reading for that cap. I'm really thinking this CPU is bad, but uh, let's try it out. Okay, this is the test board with a known good, well, everything. And yes, it's working. Video and work ran pass. Okay, suspect CPU test, gray screen, I believe we have a fail. So we'll put the good CPU into the, into Scott's top loader, see if we can make it work. Definitely uh, throw some turn pin sockets onto it. Since we have the chip out, no reason not to. It does not make it any taller to the point where the heat shield won't fit. 
It'll definitely make it easier to replace that chip if ever in the future it fails. Okay, that was easy. Okay, the suspect board with a known good CPU in it. Nothing. Same audio buzz. I think we have killed the PPU as well, so I'm going to pull it also. Well, I'm waiting for that 808 to heat back up. I don't think I retested that cap with the new CPU in it. Yep, still showing fine. Series resistance is higher, but that must be because of the CPU. But uh, 492.1 nanofarads, almost spot on. Easy enough. Hmm. Looks like one of them was sticking just a little too hard. Yep. And I have pulled up the through hole via for that pin. Looks like maybe. I'll have to keep an eye on that one when I put it back together. This runs right over here to a VIA and then up probably to video RAM or something, but I don't remember that. I have to solder some kind of a piece of wire or something here so I can actually test this PPU. put in the test board. Actually, I'm going to have to put the, the good CPU back in there as well. It's the only one I've got sitting around for test work right at the moment. Might as well retest if the CPU is still working. And yes, appears to be. Okay. 
all the workings, working PPU. These pins are kind of all over the place and it's hard to get them into a turn pin socket as opposed to a dual wipe they're a little more forgiving. see that or not but that's what happens when uh, one of the pins doesn't want to line up it bends like that just I squeeze them with the needle nose pliers try to straighten them out usually works fine There we go. A little wire came off those, I wanted to fix that real quick. Okay. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. It's black screen with the audio buzz. I'm pretty sure that PPU is dead as well. So, looks like we're going to also put a new PPU in the Scott's board to get it to work. Let's do it. And of course, once again, we'll put in turn pin sockets. do is mark that trace what via it goes to just in case it does not want to make a good connection okay we'll make it a little quicker to fix later if I have to go back do that. Okay. Now I got sockets for both CPU and PPU. So our little amp lead back on there. Pin 21, which has been lifted already. And I think we can retest. ground over to the amp. Fingers crossed. Boom. There it is. As 
Let's run the test. ROM. Video and workaround pass. Cool. I'd say we're good.